guys, welcome back to Semojo Homestead. We are out here in our orchard area because today we are going to be harvesting sweet potatoes, which we planted out here, but we'll get in that, to that later. First, it's a weekend video. Yay! So we're gonna do some highs and lows for you. Why don't you go ahead and start this week? Okay, so my high is probably, we did an event at our dance studio and I'm the event coordinator and it re went really well. It was um, a smooth event. Everyone showed up on time. I had lots of help. It was just like perfect. So that was really good. Um, my low would probably be just kind of a different schedule just because of, I was getting ready for the, that event. So school was a little bit like we fit it in where we could and it was just a little bit off kilter, I think. Like just didn't feel very smooth. The week didn't so, but that's okay. It was fun and everything worked out. So it yeah. wasn't really a big deal. And I mean, everything, it was great. Like yeah. you did a great job. Well, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for me, my low was breaking out of poison ivy. Such a pain and it's been a while since I've actually broken out like really broken out in poison ivy more than just like one or two little bumps uh, being a landscaper you know it's like whatever but uh, it was dormant I knew that it was on the property uh, but I did not think that I had really gotten into it but clearly I did like I have it all on my arms and I was wearing long sleeves that's what's super frustrating of course it would be a lot worse obviously if I wasn't and I have it like behind my ear which I never had it back there and it's annoying but um it seems to be maybe on the mend so i am hoping like by thanksgiving this stuff is gone my high was just a good week of work i think um really enjoying the new vehicle i'm over the, <laughs> the sticker shock uh and it's been a lot of fun just being able to use it and not really have to worry about you know um taking the trailer out and it's really minimized that so that's, that's been really good and just work in general this week was really good i don't think there was any like one particular point um of interest oh and having a fire it's been like cold yeah. enough where we had to start building fires again this is kind of the second round of it for us south carolina weather does this you know <laughs> um yeah but yeah that's been kind of nice having the fire chopping the firewood yeah so yeah it's been nice and toasty inside. I love that. I like it nice and like hot Like at times, inside. yes, hot, not <laughs> toasty. <laughs> but, um, so like I said before, <laughs> we are talking about uh, sweet potatoes because we're going to harvest ours. And we're gonna, so this video is really going to be a lot about like, how do you know when to harvest? How do you know when? The first year we grew them, I was like, ah, I have no clue. <laughs> So I looked it up and there are a couple of key things. It's not like you just, oh, okay, they look ready, you go dig them up. There's a couple of th key things that you wanna make sure are in place before, weather-wise, everything, before you do it. So we're gonna get into that. But first, my researching wife right here has some really fun, really cool, fun facts for you about sweet potatoes. And I bet none of you watching this video knows all of these facts, so. If you do, I'm impressed, let us know. Yeah. So, um, I really like to, um, I'm getting more into like eating for the health benefits of food. Obviously, like food was created to fuel our body, but also there are things in food that we eat that can help our body mend and function properly. And I just think it's so cool that we can feed our body and that the bo our bodies can utilize the food to mend itself and to be fueled and everything. I just think that's so cool. So, <coughs> and you can make it taste really good. Yes, <laughs> which is even better because no one wants to eat gross food. So some of the fun facts about sweet potatoes are like the first one I didn't even actually know but sweet potatoes are actually good for a diabetics diet um they slowly release the sugars uh, after you eat them so they have a low glycemic index number I know nothing about it I'm not diabetic I don't have any diabetic in my house so I don't have to look into that however if you are diabetic and you eat sweet potatoes 
the best way to eat a sweet potato is boiled because if you boil them, it keeps that glycemic index number low. Now, once they're, if they're fried or they're roasted, that number actually goes up a lot. It was in the 40s. The glycemic index number was like in the 40s for boiling. It shot up into the 90s for any time of prep or any other type of prepping. So just an interesting fact about them. Um, also, the other thing about sweet potatoes is that everyone knows the purple sweet potatoes have high in, are high in antioxidants but the orange ones are as well as, and the yellow ones, but they're all different. They all have different antioxidants that they offer the body. So what's best, hey peanut, what's best is if you eat a wide variety of the colors. So um, if you're planting sweet potatoes, like next year when we plant sweet potatoes, I wanna plant several varieties so we have all the antioxidants from all those different colors. So something else that's really interesting to me is that sweet potatoes are high in magnesium. Um, magnesium is really important in our diet, especially if you have a child or you yourself kind of display the signs of like ADD, ADHD. Um, a lot of times when a child is having a hard time focus or an adult is having a hard time focusing. What? <laughs> it's actually because of a deficiency. Um, and so magnesium has really been linked to that. So I have been trying to put it in our diet and find ways, new ways to put, in, put magnesium in our diet. And sweet potatoes are high in magnesium. Now, of course you wanna eat the skins, that's where a lot of those minerals are found. But um, I'm just excited that we have this superfood growing and we get to harvest it and I get to feed it to my family. Yeah. Um, and they are super easy to grow. Uh, if you haven't ever tried it, definitely try them. I mean, they really are like a hands off crop to grow. You know, there's not really any pest. Um, no rabbits will eat on them if they're like rabbits have access to your garden, but you've probably got bigger problems if you have rabbits <laughs> getting into your garden. Um, but even with that, they rebound fine and they just put out new growth. And so um, super, super easy. The biggest thing with them is if they're just on bare soil, they will tend to start rooting, which may not be a bad thing. That does give you more potatoes. Uh, they do tend to be a little bit more kind of smaller along the plant. But um, yeah, other than that, really easy. I don't like a ton of water. Uh, you actually are probably at more risk overwatering than you are underwatering them. And they like heat. So if you're in an environment like us, we're like an eight, uh, zone eight and hot summers, they thrive here. So yeah, uh, give them a try if you haven't. If you have, then keep growing them because all these fun facts, you're just adding all those benefits into your life. Yeah. So we're going to start digging them up before we run out of daylight out here because the sun's setting a lot earlier. But uh, we're going to bring you along and give you all of those tips on how you know when your sweet potatoes are ready to be dug up. So let's go. All right, so I think I mentioned this before, but this year we did them a little bit different. We've always grown them in the garden. And this year we did kind of what I'm calling more field grown. We planted them out in our orchard, kind of as an experiment, kind of just sort of see and maybe work towards doing more of a uh, food forest than an orchard. So right now I am just pulling up all of this dead weedy grass that grew up in between them. because We couldn't keep it cut without cutting the vines. All right guys, so a couple of things you wanna look for to know when your sweet potatoes are ready for harvest. The first thing is if you get flowers on them, which they should be coming on like into the summer, into fall, um, that's a really good sign. That means that you definitely have potatoes underground. Now I say potatoes, sweet potatoes are actually not a type of potato, <laughs> even though we, what? Even though we call them sweet potatoes, but flowers, good thing. You know you got potatoes if you see those. Um, but the first thing you want to look for is when the leaves start to yellow, like this one. Now this one's really been worn out. It's starting to yellow. That means the temps have started to dip. And when that happens, the tops of the vines are pretty much done growing, which means you've gotten all the growth you're possibly going to get on those potatoes underground 
for that year. So that's the first thing. Number two, you want to do it when you've had kind of a, a dry spell. Uh, now they say like at least 24 hours without irrigation or rain. I really like to give it about a week if possible of no rain or anything just to make sure the ground's really dry. So you really want those potatoes to be as dry as possible. The less moisture in there, the faster the curing time. And that curing time, which we'll talk about later, is really essential to being able to store these potatoes for a long period of time. I have found that that is also the time that is highest risk for disease or some type of fungus or something getting in there and spoiling a couple of potatoes. So the lower the moisture content in the potato, the more success you're gonna have in doing this. The other thing is ideally you want to find a warmer day that you can harvest these things on. Now I keep saying ideally because they're not a necessity, but they're really going to help make harvest and preserving them go a lot smoother and be a lot more successful. Um, we've been getting down pretty cold recently, which is why these vines are really going fast um, in just the decline of them. But today we're in the mid 60s, so it's a little bit warmer also just makes harvesting them a little bit you know more enjoyable um, typically for us here in South Carolina we have always harvested about halfway through November it just tends to be like how it always falls regardless of what temperatures do um, we have typically by that point had a cooler period and they makes them ready to harvest sweet potatoes will root if you let them just run across the ground I have done my best to prevent that from happening with these just by simply every few weeks moving a vine just like that. That simple, it prevents them from rooting down. And really that's just so I know where all of the potatoes are. I know that they're gonna be at the base of the plant, right where we planted it. It also allows more energy to go into those potatoes. When you're digging them up, if you've got a potato fork, that's the best thing to use. We don't have one, so we're just gonna use a shovel. I always start about 8 to 12 inches off the plant just to make sure that we don't damage any of those or to do minimal damage on the potatoes. Now, if you damage one, it's not a lost cause. It's fine. It's going to scar over. It'll be fine. In the commercial trade, they don't want those because the scar doesn't look the most appetizing, but it's perfectly safe to eat, whatever. So we're just going to dig and loosen up the dirt around the base of them enough to where we can pull them out without damaging any but also without having the vine break off which then means we kind of lose a little bit of the area that we were in during the three years that we've been growing sweet potatoes we always find some in the spring that didn't get dug up that are in the ground which is perfectly fine but if you find that don't expect to have another crop of sweet potatoes off of that you have to grow sweet potatoes from slits, which basically means you let a tuber sprout out and root it, and then you stick that in the ground. That's what's going to give you a, con a harvest of sweet potatoes. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> uh, if you just let one potato start growing again, it's going to put out nice, pretty vines, but not going to produce a bunch of potatoes for you. I keep saying potatoes, and I've already said they're not potatoes, but a bunch of sweet potatoes. So this one actually is a really good one. Check this thing out. Now this one's right on the surface. If you do have a really good sweet potato crop, you will have some that do start to surface, which is another thing you can look for. Nice. So let me get all the vines out of the way. And when you pull them out, that's pretty much what you get. So we're just gonna break these off. And Joe, can you bring me that box over there? We've got a box out here we're gonna put them in. Oh, that one's really crazy. Another thing I do wanna point out to you is even these small ones will be fine. Um, these kind of like fingerling type ones. Uh, these are really good for roasting with like beets and onions and other root vegetables, carrots. Or you could boil them down, mash them up, use them that way. I will say in our experience, I would plan on using these guys first. They are gonna be the first ones to go bad. So if you try to hold on to these for some like special, like, you know, wanting to use them for fingerling for a special occasion, they may or may not make it that long. Your big ones are gonna make it a lot longer after curing. 
That being said, I did see, here they are. Anything that's like this size, toss them. They're not gonna survive. When they cure, they're gonna shrivel up. You're not gonna get anything out of these guys. So those are not worth keeping, not worth anything. Uh, you could feed them to pigs or whatever if you want to, but I would say don't waste your time on those. All right, so my favorite thing about harvesting sweet potatoes is we get forage for the goats who are already coming and the cow. He likes them too. So the next step with the sweet potatoes is once they're all dug up, they have to cure. You want them to cure because that's when they harden and it's also when those starches turn into sugars and make them sweet. So you want to be a little patient with them and let them cure. The longer they cure, the sweeter they are. If you are in temperatures below 80 degrees when you're curing, they need to cure for at least three weeks and they need to be in a dry location. So like for us, it's gonna be really cold, we have rain coming, so we're probably gonna cure them in our house. Um, but if you are in a location where it's warm and there isn't a lot of humidity, you can definitely cure them outside. And they're not like potatoes where if sunlight hits them, you know, potatoes turn green and you gotta cut that off. Um, they're not gonna do that they're just going to cure like she said harden up dry out a little bit and basically turn into what you would buy in the grocery store so we thank you guys for joining us i hope this was helpful information um you know a lot of people i have heard will plant them and then they're like oh wait when are we supposed to harvest them kind of like we did the first yeah. year we planted them uh, but they are again super easy to grow they don't take a lot of space i mean they are vines so they are going to want to kind of run in that sense but they will also climb up stuff. So you could actually run these up a trellis if you're limited on ground space. And they're pretty. They really are, uh, especially the flowers on mm -hmm. them. It's a, it could be an option for a small homestead, small backyard garden, uh, limited space type thing. And you could grow them in containers. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's it that we have for you. We will probably do a video later on after these things have cured about how you can store them. The easiest way is put them in a pantry, but there are some other options. So we may be doing a video on that, so stay tuned. But until then, guys, have a great week. Hope you have a great Thanksgiving and be blessed.